I've just come from the market and I've come back to the monument. Now, where I filmed it when I went looking for the names at the cemetery, one of my subscribers who watches the video vlogs recognised the name on there as part of his family. Now, it's not someone who was lost in the water. It was the actual sculpture of this lovely statue. So, it's signed G. Privat. You can see that I'm trying to zoom in. And it turns out this is Gilbert Privat, or Privar, probably, the sculptor. So anyway, now Matt, who contacted me, messaged me on the YouTube. This was created by his great-great-grandfather's younger brother. I think she's lovely. All right. I'm going to do a quick sweep around so we can get a better view of it. detail even the even down to the tassels on the shawl there I love it and the bow on the back of her bonnet and the folds in her skirt so there you are Matt hopefully one day you'll be able to come and visit her Small world, isn't it? people in the comments have asked me what are the lockdown restrictions like over here especially after the um, ghost town vlogs um, because as you can see the French are uh, staying indoors anyway what we have to do over here we went into lockdown a week before the UK um, we the original lockdown was set for until the 1st of December and then the announcement was made last week that it's pretty much continuing until the 15th of December. Um, more of the shops have been allowed to open and we are allowed to go a little bit further. Originally we could only go within one kilometre of our house for one hour's exercise or we were allowed to go to a doctor's appointment, pick up medicines or buy basic goods. The DIY stores have been open, so we have been able to collect our windows and some equipment so that, um, and some materials so that Tony can carry on doing what he needed to do. But obviously we've kept those to a minimum. But we're not allowed to um, visit anyone. There's no bars or restaurants open. Um, until this weekend, there were parts of the supermarket which were roped off where they um, sell clothes and Christmas present bits we weren't allowed to buy. Um, so after the 15th, we're hoping that they are going to um, let us go out. We also have to take, every time we leave the house, we have to take what they call an attestation, um, which is a piece of paper. It's a form that you fill out it's got the whole list of reasons that you are allowed to go out. Oh, you are allowed to go out for work. Obviously, we don't have that over here because we're working in our own house. Um, so anyway, you have to sign this piece of paper. You have to fill in your name, your date of birth, your address, where you were born, 
Um, where, where you signed the piece of paper, what time you left the house, and the reason for leaving the house. If you get caught by the gendarmes without that piece of paper, if they ask to see it, the first time you'll get a fine of, I think it's 135 euros. The second time I think it goes up to something like 400 euros. So you really don't want to get caught out without your piece of paper. And Tony has actually been stopped on his way to the DIY store to collect his window. Um, they were quite happy, they checked his driver license for his ID, but they were quite happy that he was he had an appointment to go and collect his window. Um, but yeah, they are out there and they will stop you. So it's a little bit more strict than it has been in the UK. But, uh, yeah, so we still, we thought we'd have to, we thought we wouldn't have to fill the forms in after this, um, this week, but we have got to do it for at least another two weeks now, which is a bit of a nuisance. We are allowed to go out to three hours at a time now for exercise and within 20 kilometres. So that's slightly better, but uh, we're still not allowed to mix anyone, visit anyone, or, or go out and have a drink or go out and have a meal, which is a shame. We are missing the company. At least this time we had plenty to do. Last time in the lockdown, we got stuck in the lockdown in the UK where we just finished a project. We had no jobs to do. And it was extremely boring and Tony was very frustrated. At least this time he's got plenty to be getting on with. So we're keeping ourselves busy. Um, cracking on with lots of jobs. Cooking ourselves some nice food, as we can. Uh, and we are looking forward to Christmas. We were meant to be going back to the UK for Christmas, but we've had to make a decision a couple of weeks back now as to whether we still carried on with that plan or whether we stayed here. So unfortunately our first Christmas in France we are going to be here without any family with us. We do have some friends that come over to help us do some of the work and they will be spending Christmas. Uh, and we have had an invite to the Chateau which is nice. So we should have a little bit of company as long as they lift the restrictions. Quite a boring job this. That's nice when it's done. This bit is when you leave it overnight and you dry it and you come out and polish it the next morning when there's only a tiny bit of dust left on it. What would you like my help with? Just stick to on something in there. Oh, why have we got this big bit of pipe here? Is that...? It's part of my jig. It's part of your jig, is it? Right, okay. Hey. Oh, that's holding your strap. Right, okay. Mm. Right. Yeah, this is going to go this way. What, what's the problem? Well, the problem is it's... <laughs> okay. Just that. It's cold out here, isn't it? The sun came out a little while ago, but it's clouded over again now. Yes. Hmm.
So what's going to happen to this bit of wood I'm holding here? Is it just squeezing it together? Yeah. Right. But we seriously have to get you some workbenches and things, don't we? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Although well, you're quite good at inventing things. <laughs> oh, I'll let this one go now. Yes. Okay. Now I don't want you to clamp it. All you're doing is holding that there so it can't jump out. Oh. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's moving towards me. Is it meant to do that? Hey. Just holding it flat against the table, am I? Yes. Right, okay. Ooh. I can hear it creaking. Good. Have I got to continue to hold that, or is that... Yeah, Are you going to do it again? What's happening? Got a mile to go here. Oh, have we? Oh, wow. We moved a little bit. It's hard work, isn't it? It's amazing how solid they still are after all this time. Mm. I've got a mile to go yet. Mind you, that has bent that. Bent what? It's bent this side. Um, oh, what the timber? Yeah. Oh, will it snap then if you push it, it too snap. far? No, it just can't get square of it. Oh, I see. So you can't work out if it's square or not. Yeah. It's bent this side as well. Oh dear. This would be out there. Let's see. Well, it's not far out now. It's nearly there. Again, are we? Yeah. It's not going to snap, is it? Oh, worries me, it's under a lot of tension. Whoa! The yeah, whole thing moved. Oh, was it meant to do that? No. Oh, well, you're worrying me now. <laughs> I want to run away. This clamp one I'm holding is freezing. It's not a million miles away. Ah, I think that's the glass bin. Hey. Quite light today, emptying the bin. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they're going to take their bags. Oh, I doubt it. Near Christmas time. I'm Listen, see if there's any more. Listen. Oh, maybe. What what they'll probably do is empty the bin of all the bottles and then pick up the bags that we left beside it and send them back in the bin. <laughs> I'm going to let this go. Oh, can I run? Yes. Whoa. Ouch. Yeah, there's a, a lot of tension in that. So, have you got to do it again or is it? Yes. I'm trying to get straight in here now. Right. Can I go in now because I'm freezing? Yes. Whoa. Okay. Okay. No, I didn't take the ones in the bag. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, never mind. So that means uh, we've got to go to the tip with those. Go and say hello to Carol. <laughs> I wonder why the fountain is in the frothy. Looks like someone may have added something to the water. Probably to clean it. Because it was quite green. So I've just come away from the fountain a little bit because it's quite noisy, especially on the microphone. 
Anyway, I hope it's not disturbing you too much. But this little shop here, this little house, we've just bought this this week. All right, it's going to take Tony's mug of tea. Is this your last one of the six? Yes. Is it going to be warm enough for paint to dry? Yes, it is. Okay. I can see my breath. Mm. Yes, it's a bit nippy. Yeah, I'm going to have to sort myself out some more jumpers and gloves and all sorts. Right. So this is the sixth one that Tony's nearly finished repairing. How long's that taken? Too long. Too long? <laughs> Couple of days, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's good though, it's good work. Right. Is it done then? Do you want a hand? No? Oh, just that last bolt in the middle, is it? Yeah. And what are you doing there? Eh? What are you doing with that bit there? What's it? Is that just to make the screw go in? Well, I bought the wrong side of the screw, isn't it? I recessed it, but it's better, oh. it's better job in. So you've recessed it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that looks tidy, huh? So will you just fill these other bits once yeah. that's done? Sorry? Will you just fill these bits where it's... Yes. Not, not been squeezed back together quite? Buy some um, shutter dogs the other day. No. Oh, did they not have any? Um, I ran out of time. Oh, okay. I'll okay. What am I doing? Just, just steadying it. It's just going to get cold. Yep, yeah, we'll get this on. That's it. Right. Right, drink your tea before it goes cold. Yeah, how you get it on? You're right. Excellent. Looks good. Today I'm going to make some French onion soup. So, firstly we need onions. I've already peeled and halved these. So if you hear a lot of sniffling, that's because of the onions. 
Okay, I've got some vegetable oil to cook the onions in. I've got some beef consomme. Um, I've only got one sin of this. I'm going to make quite a large batch. So I would normally use two. This is concentrated beef consomme. I would normally use two of these, but I'm going to use this plus some extra beef stock. Whatever you use, you want a good beef stock. I've got seasonings. And then to finish off, I've got some lovely crusty bread and some Gruyere cheese to make a crouton to serve it. Okay, right, let's get started. I'm going to chop up these onions. I've halved them already, but I'm just going to slice them through. Right, I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of the sunflower oil. can use butter in this, but... I've got sunflower oil today, so a couple of tablespoons of sunflower oil should be plenty. I'm going to put that on a medium heat. I want to finish chopping up the onions. And I have got two, four. I've got seven small to medium onions here three or four large onions or you can halve this if you want to make a smaller quantity but this will do six good servings I've quartered them and then sliced them so that they're spoon sized pieces of onion and they will cook down slightly and we're going to cook these for about 20 minutes stirring them fairly regularly as we don't want them to burn we just want them to brown slightly and soften now our onions are beginning to soften not quite there yet need about 20 minutes in total and i forgot one of the ingredients which is worcester sauce if you do, if you can't get worcester sauce i'm sure you can find an alternative um, this is mostly it's made from vinegar, anchovies, I think it's got a little bit of chilli in it, so it's a, it's a savoury, savoury sauce. If you can't get Worcester sauce, then you'll have to choose some other seasoning. I mean, it's similar to a fish sauce, it has got anchovies in it, vinegar. So something along those lines would do, but you can, I know you can buy Worcester sauce in France, so if you can buy it in France, I'm sure you can pretty much get it anywhere. Right, once the onions have softened up, for the last few minutes I like to turn the heat up slightly, as long as I can stand here and keep an eye on it, just to caramelise them a little bit for a bit more flavour. So I'm just going to turn that up a little bit. We don't want any burnt bits so we need to keep it moving so I've transferred the onions into the bigger pot I'm going to add the other ingredients first here I'm going to add the uh, beef consomme as I said I would normally use two tins of this and then add half a pint for each tin of water because this is condensed so I'm going to make up for it because I'm going to add the beef stock by adding a pint and a half of water in total so I'm going to add into that the stock and then I've got a pint and a half of water That's it. Put the heat back on. And we want to bring that up to a simmer. At the same time, I'm going to be adding the rest of the ingredients, which is just some seasonings. Um, a wee bit of salt. I've got my flour salt. Some black pepper. It's about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper there. Obviously to your own flavour and to your own taste seasonings. 
And now the Worcester sauce, we're going to have quite a lot of this. I'm going to add about three tablespoons of Worcester sauce. That's really going to boost the flavour. Then we bring it back to a simmer. And then we're going to simmer that for 15 minutes. Right. While we're doing that, I'm going to cut some slices of bread. Make individual croutons. We're going to just use one slice for each bowl of soup that we want to serve. And that's about half an inch, maybe slightly thicker. We're going to toast that on both sides and top it with a little bit of Gruyere cheese. I have grated Gruyere. You can't get Gruyere, Emmental or any cheese, cheddar, but I tend to use Gruyere for this. Right, it's had another 15 minutes simmering away. Um, if you get a tiny little bit of scum on the edge, you can just scoop that out and throw that away because it doesn't look great. It won't hurt. And then we can serve it up. And there we have it. And we just float our little toasted crouton on the top. Enjoy. Of course, if you don't eat dairy, then you can leave off the cheese. Right, I've just popped next door to the little hairdressing shop. I'm going to show you around and explain a few things. So this is the hairdressing salon. Still got the equipment connected. Right, here we have a key. This is the key to the side gate. It's just a little alleyway that leads around to the little tiny back courtyard that this place has. Now, it's set out as a shop, but of course it's got, it's like a little house. There's no electricity on at the moment. So I'm gonna to have to do this by torchlight. So bear with. Okay. So, behind the little shop, there is a kitchen. It's a little bit dated. And this is just a little partition wall here. It's got a fair bit of Artex, which you don't see so much in France, but unfortunately it has got a fair bit of Artex in here and some timber, um, like tongue and groove panelling. You do see quite a bit of that here. Now, so there's a sink, a little bit dated, I know, but that's easy changeable. And then there's a Brick built, um, I don't know what you would call it, sort of an island. And then we have the kitchen. And it's got a hob, an extractor, a built in oven. Um, it's all fairly clean and tidy actually. It's very dated again, but perfectly usable with a, with a clean up. And some painting. There's going to be quite a lot of painting going on in here. But now, off of this, we have got a little courtyard. I'm going to just switch the torch off and I'm not. Right, let's just find the key. And I'll take you out and show you the courtyard out here. It's a little bit wet for the moment. Anyway, so we have French doors. Out onto a little courtyard. Just got an area for the bins. 
Is it small? But it's room for room for little table and chairs, and it's got side access. Now this building you can see here, which we obviously need to do quite a bit of repairs to, is my building on the other side of the alleyway. Right, it's even got an outside tap, look. <laughs> so we have side gate. And that's part of my side house. And then we have this access way, which is shared between this house my next door house and another house which is attached on the back of this but doesn't belong to us so that's their access way as well so we all share that oh and guess what a little bit more ivy but it's on my side I don't think there's any ivy on this side right let's go in something else day to die so there's quite a bit of cleaning up to do out here. Give it a good old jet wash and we've got some more artex on the outside wall, which is a bit weird. But never mind. I think the gate needs a little bit of attention. But yeah. Anyway, it's in fairly good condition this. Compared to some of our other buildings. As you can see, there's a few built-in cupboards. I say, a perfectly usable oven. I think it's been used for a while. Oh, I need to move the blinds at least. But yeah, that is perfectly clean. Don't think it's been used, but now then, we have some wood panelling out here. Wood panelling on the ceiling. And some more Artex, lovely. Tile floors. And what's through here? Well, through here is a staircase. A twisty turny little wooden staircase. And there's a little space underneath the staircase for some storage. Okay. Well, let's venture up the stairs. Oh, we've got some more wood panelling. It's quite small, this. It's like a staircase in a cupboard. Okay, up the windy staircase. To a doorway. And another staircase. Right, we'll show you up there in a moment. Little window that overlooks the little terrace down there. And we have a staircase going up the top there. And we have here a bathroom. We have a shower. Looks like a power shower. Again, it needs a good clean up hasn't been used for some time i don't think this flat's been used for a long time although i think obviously the toilet has um brand new balloon which is the hot water tank some old wood paneling on the ceiling and a lovely dolphin toilet seat wow okay some quite old-fashioned tiles and is that more artex or something something very similar Hmm, okay. Oh, actually, that no, that's probably, that's part of the outside wall. It's probably rendered um, tiled floor. Okay, got electric heater in this one. We have a, quite a decent size under the staircase there. And then through into the lounge. Now this one has got some beams, boarded up ceiling. 
This is the lounge. It's got a decent sized fireplace in here, which could be quite nice. Someone's painted, well, no, actually, someone's stuck a picture of a flower on there. But yeah, some more Artex, of course, on the walls. But yeah, all in fairly good order. As a window out to the front, which overlooks the square. Let's see if we can open the shutters, shall we? And uh, it's got some lovely wooden floors. All right. And then single glazed windows. And these metal shutters. I'm not very keen on these, so we'll probably replace these. Let's see if I can open it. Hey. Okay. And there we have. It's not a nice day today. It's now that I haven't started raining this afternoon. But yeah, they're not fully open, but you get the picture. Lovely view. Out onto the courtyard and the fountain. Quite an old fashioned glass light in there, which is a bit weird sitting on that. So by itself there but yeah the floors are lovely decent enough sized room let me stand back and let you let you see how big it is all right and let's go up the next staircase up to the top all right now then we've got an awful lot of this Home grave wood up here, probably hiding a multitude of sins. There's a little bit of a damp patch over there, which we need to check out. Um, we know there's a couple of little issues with the roof, but there really isn't too much that wants doing for it's usable. Here we are, up the top. I showed you a little snippet of this. Got some beautiful beams up here. Obviously, this is inside the roof, so this would have been the loft. Some on the top of the chimney there. And as I say, a lot of tongue and groove board in. Now, there's a, a little window there, like a um, skylight type window. That We know that's got to be replaced. As it does leak which is why there's a tray underneath it but all in all it's in quite good order it's not going to take an awful lot to put this one back into use this one does have an electric heater up here and then it's got this little window again looking out onto the square don't know if you can see much out there yeah so this is our new purchase so what do you think we're going to use this for what would you use it for there's quite a lot of accommodation for a small building I can stand back over here. You can get an idea of the scale of this room, which is even bigger than the one below because this one goes over the top of the bathroom as well. It's absolutely huge in here. This is where the staircase goes back down to the little to the back of the little shop but it also goes up again right what's through here so why have we bought this why have we bought this little house shop next door well one reason is because it was next door 
Right. But the actual reason that we bought this is actually that we haven't bought this. We've bought this on behalf of someone else. We bought this on behalf of some friends. Because of the lockdown, they weren't able to get over here to buy it themselves. So we've gone through the process and been to the notaries and signed documents. So our friends, who we have bought this on behalf of, ever since we first came here, and ever since our friend first came here, he said that he loved this little building, and if it ever came up for sale, he'd be interested in buying it. But he didn't think he'd ever be able to afford it. So when one day the lady put a retirement notice in the window and a for sale notice, we made inquiries. It wasn't up with any agents. Um, so we got in touch with her and asked her about it and said, could we have a come and have a look? So we came and had a look. And then we asked her the price. And it's going to be really exciting. And obviously I put the video out last week to congratulate them. Not everybody caught that little bit. Congratulations to Tony and Tracy. Because this is for them. And we can't wait for them to get out here and see it in person. So I said all will be revealed. And so it will. 